everything is set up here and because I'm here and able to tell you that these two tracks that this switch forms are dead end tracks I know that I'm going to be able to watch over here and see if there's anything coming but we've also got to watch for those rail cars so that they don't roll this way so Watchman Lookout is going to be watching those and watching over here watching those and watching over here and as the Watchman Lookout Will you be the watchman lookout? I sure will. As the watchman lookout, Dave is going to give us 15 seconds before those cars roll towards us or something rolls this way. So what we're able to do now with Dave as our designated watchman lookout is we can walk in and we can take a look at the switch and see how it all works. I can throw this switch if we want to because we're in a yard. The switch in a yard, we are in yard limits. So anything can occupy any section of track at any time and so whenever I'm on the rail in yard limits in my high rail I have to be watching ahead of myself and watching behind me and the other people that are out there have to be watching out for me as well so you have to be able to stop within half the range of your vision if you're on the rail in yard limits that's for MOW vehicles that's for MOW equipment that's for trains anything that's on the rail because we've got that rule stopping within the half half of your vision you also have to be watching for switches that you're going to be coming into and out of and so I'm able to stand here at the switch and throw this switch all that I want right now because I'm in yard limits and somebody else is watching out for me just like I'm watching for them if we were on the main line where we have track warrant control which is track that's controlled by the dispatcher in order to throw that switch I have to con contact the dispatcher get a track warrant and then the track becomes mine then I can do whatever I want with it. So yard's a nice place to do this if you want to see how this stuff works. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a lot more of an involved process. So we can go out here and take a look at this switch. Again, this is what I was saying. These braces are the old style of doing it. That's to keep the rail from moving and, and rolling over. Right here we've got our switch point. This is a knife switch point, whereas it is a switch point that comes up and it meets right against the gauge. Of the, of the running rail. On the newer switches we've actually got what we call a Samson switch point and that goes underneath of this this rail and so when the locomotive or whatever is coming across it comes onto that switch point is actually a very smooth transition whereas this right here gets war and we have to come out and keep welding them. Um, you can see on that one how it's been welded a lot. You can see the weld marks and that's just wear of a switch point. So, Switch points wear the most. Frogs will also wear as well. Um, and so we have to uh, take care of uh, frogs by welding them up too. But I'll show you how this switch point throws. First, before I, th I throw a switch, I always have to look inside the switch and make sure that there's nothing in here. So that when I throw that switch, I'm not compressing anything inside. So the, my switch point here is clear. So now I can come back over. I can take my hook out. Before I throw it, I'm going to look once more and make sure that I've got nothing coming at me. Again, Dave is here to let us know that. Step on right here. Sometimes the switches will pop up and you have to be watching out for that. So that if it pops up, you're out of the way. And now you can see how everything fits. And how we've changed. So this point you can see is nice and tight. If people talk about a gapped point on a switch, there will be a space between right here. So that if a, a, a truck or a wheel set comes through, it would pick that point. And that point would then come to the center and you'd have wheel sets going both ways on the switch. So you don't want a gapped point on a switch. You want it to fit nice and tight. Is Some still done manually? Yes, that's all still adjusted manually some switch nomenclature here of course we've got our switch stand these ties are going to be called our headlock ties you'll notice that they're a little bit longer and that's the only purpose of them is to hold the switch stand we've got our connecting rods here these two rods which are also adjustable you can see the cotter pins and how that can adjust the bridle rod connects the switch stand to the connecting rod our gauge plate is right here and that is a, a solid piece of steel that holds gauge right there at the switch points because you have to hold gauge there. As you work your way through the switch, 
These are our switch plates. These switch plates get oiled every winter so that when snow and ice occurs, they don't freeze up. It's uh, a very thing, a very big thing here in Wisconsin, and you, you know what snow and ice does in the UP. You got to keep that clear so that that can move nice and clean. Yep. We had, actually we come out and we chip it off. I'll play the, 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 the room and, and sweep it clean. Now here's our frog. So our frog is this piece right here all the way through to the joint on the other side. These are our um, guardrails. Again, if something were to derail, it would either pull itself this way and this guardrail would stop it, or it would pull itself that way and that guardrail would stop it. Once you get past the frog, it's just switch ties all the way out to the last long switch tie and then you're into regular trap. 